knocked down there by Chelsea's nose guard, Brian Brunner. Also, Kelly Beasley, the free safety, coming up to help out on the tackle. It'll lead the Lobos with a third and one at their own 44-yard line. Seven for 11 for 100 yards for Osborne. Interesting that he starts right off with a couple of running plays, wants to establish that ground game so he can go back up top. Clock running, 12.35 left. Third quarter, 14-14 is the score. Tulsa led seven upping after one. It was tied at the half. David Osborne, the quarterback. Off to the right side. He's going to keep. He's going to get the first down. He's across midfield and brought down at the Tulsa. 48-yard line. The right defensive end, Carl Pendleton, finally caught him on the pursuit. Robert Estes, the right cornerback from Tyler, Texas, coming up to help out. But if there's that dangerous option of uh, Osborne, he is a multi-dimensional player, Bob Stevens. 11 first downs, Osborne, as he mentioned, 7 of 11. He's also 7 carries for 22 yards along the 14, and he has one of those touchdowns. First and 10 for the Lobos. That's their Hurricane 48-yard line as they move into TU territory. This drive started back at their own 35. Osborne on first down, looking back to throw, looking for Keith McGee, the flanker on the right sideline, and it's incomplete. A little too wide for McGee, who's going to curl out, went downfield about 10 yards. When he got to the first down, Markery curled outside. The ball was in the air. By the time he turned, it was incomplete. Interesting statistic. The last three bowl games that the Mexico Lobos have played in have folded. The 1961 Aviation Bowl, we've already alluded to, where they beat Western Michigan. The 1946 Harbor Bowl, which they uh, tied Montana State in that same year. They also played in the Pineapple Bowl. 1946, they lost to the Hawaiian All-Stars, 19-14. to The Justice Bowl will live. Oh, Second oh. and 10 at the 48-yard line. Clock running with 11, rather stopped with 11.50 left. In the third quarter play, Osborne back to pass one more time. On the swing pass, he's got Denny Allen out of the backfield. Allen beyond the 45, inside the 40, down to the 36-yard line where the sophomore free safety John Cooper brought him down with some help from the backtracking Cliff Abbott at linebacker. First down for the Lobos. They like to sneak Denny Allen into the ball game on situations like that. After the incomplete pass, Allen coming in to call the play, and he called his own number again earlier in the ball game. They ran the same kind of a play, and Allen picked up 14. Offensive coordinator Frank Sadler and Joe Morrison mixing up things nicely here for the Lobos. First and 10 after 36. David Osborne brings him out. He's got a good drive going for his football team. He hands it off to Michael Carter. Carter off left tackle behind his man, Kevin H. Maybe a couple of yards. Up, down to about the 34. It'll leave them with about a second and eight as the TU defense hung tough that time. Michael Carter doesn't seem to be showing any of the effects of the injured leg he suffered in the first half. Uh, he looks like he's about 100% right now. Average 6.7 a carry during the season. Six touchdowns, his longest 76. Caught three balls for 17. Averaging 5.7. Rushed for 722 yards. In this game, he's got eight for 56. Second and eight at the 34. Call goes to Denny Allen. Allen off right tackle this time. Maybe three or four yards. Down to the Tulsa 30-yard line. Making the play there for the Golden Hurricane was Brian Burroughs, the linebacker from St. Louis. Tulsa defense now threatened as the New Mexico Lobos have driven it down to the 30-yard line. Tulsa's defense and the coordinator Mike Knoll and particularly the safeties and the defensive backs under the direction of Jay Kane need to stiffen up here because Allen, uh, or Osborne rather, perfect opportunity now to air it out and to uh, stick one down inside the 20. Third and four at the 30. Lobos looking to get the ball down for first down territory and then they'll open the end zone. Osborne on the option. Oh, a defensive play for Tulsa. Looks like Blake Bergman coming through for the tackle. It will be a quarterback sack. A two-yard loss, and that will knock Osborne back to the 32-yard line as Tulsa's Blake Borkman from Dallas came in with a big defensive play as he shot the gap and made the tackle. I could see Blake's parents across the field. They made the trip over from Dallas. Uh, they love getting the chance to see their son play, the senior in his final ball game for the Hurricane, making a big play on Osborne. On fourth and six, New Mexico will attempt a field goal. Pete Park on for the field goal attempt, the senior from Arkansas, 5 of 11 during the year, 52 as long as against UTEP on the career, 25 of 48 for 167 points, 60 points this year. The holder is Casey Mount, a senior defensive back. There's the kick. 
It is going to fall a little bit short and wide to the left against the wind. He had a 49-yard attempt, and he had to kick it a long way, Bob, and he just couldn't get enough on it, so it stays 14-14. Again, that big defensive play by Bjorkman. Worst the New Mexico drive. They missed the field goal. Tulsa get the ball back. Time out on the field. The Hurricane will have it when we come back. Ten minutes, ten seconds left in the third quarter of play. It's Tulsa 14, New Mexico 14. The Justice Bowl will continue. The Vault, a private high-security facility to store your papers and valuables, from jewelry to gold to silver and collectibles. The vault offers ultimate protection in sophisticated surroundings. Select from small security boxes on up to uncommonly large boxes. The vault even offers case rifle storage and fireproof high security computer data storage. A 6,000 pound steel door, a guard, and video surveillance. A personal key system that ensures no one can open your vault box with you. And the vault is the only place offering high security short term storage. Open seven days a week, the vault brings you the advantage of ready access. And there's even a handsome conference room for your private convenience. Check out the vault today at 71st and Lewis in South Point Center or call 496-1048. You'll be impressed. Secure, convenient, private. The vault, meeting the special needs of individuals and business. Call today. They're open, 496-1048. Amon Carter Stadium, Fort Worth, tie ball game. 14-14, third quarter, 82 Justice Ball. Scott Brown in a quarterback for the Golden Hurricane, a six-foot tall, 182-pound junior from Sepulpa, a suburb of Salsa. This year, 21 of 38 for 312, one interception, two touchdowns, a 55% passer. On first down. At the 32, Scott Brown looking back to throw on first down. He's looking for the flanker, David Hersey. He's got him out across the 35, maybe to the 37. Now the 38-yard line is David Hersey fighting for some extra yardage. And the 6'3 junior from Elgin, Illinois, by way of Fort Scott, Kansas Junior College, has his first catch of the afternoon. And Bob, you surprised that Brown came out and threw on first down. Very interesting that Scott went ahead and took charge. They call him Catfish. The six-foot junior, he was a walk-on in TU after being a valedictorian of his class at Sepulpa. Scott Brown in charge for the Hurricane. Second and four, far TU at its own 38-yard line. The Lobo defense digging in, linebacker shifting a bit. Scott Brown is back to throw one more time. This time he's looking for the tight end, Kurt Steinhauer, and it's a little bit too tall. Johnny Jackson, the linebacker, got back and followed Steinhauer into the secondary. Also, Rain Hornsack, the great sophomore free safety from Tucson, in on the play. It'll be third and four for TU at the 38-yard line. So the clock will stop now with 9.45 left third quarter on just a picture afternoon here in December. Temperatures in the mid-50s, sunny skies, a couple of clouds, just a gorgeous day with winds from the south. Third and four at the 38. Scott Brown turning, handing off to Michael Gunner. Gunner down across the 40. He's going to get the first down. Out to the 43-yard line as Michael Gunner followed Sid Abramowitz, the big 6'5 sophomore from Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Excuse me, the 6'5 senior from Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, across the line of scrimmage. And Sid led the way and got to you the first down. Offensive line coach Joe Hollis would like to have him back for a couple of more years. TU 5 out of 8 on third down situations now. Abramowitz caught Ein, Kaspersky and Pearson doing a super job throughout the season for this TU running attack. First and 10 at the 43-yard line. Scott Brown this time looking for Ken Lacey, gives it up to him. Oh, he runs into the official. He's going to gain about five or six yards. Oh, up to about the 49-yard line. It looks like, Bob, the umpire is flat on his back. Harold Danrich, he took a shot from wow. Ken Lacey. <laughs> Harold Lacey, Lacey, Lacey made a cut, right. Bob, and Stammer just got caught in between Lacey's cut, and he took a full hit, and he went down like a ton of bricks. I guess you might call this an official timeout where they check him out. <laughs> They're not going to bring out the chain for him, that's for sure. Harold Sandridge is being helped up by uh, Bob Cox, Bill Dugan, Eldon Hall all around him. Vance Carlson, our referee, is uh, standing over, kind of uh, uh, 
supervising the whole thing. Scott McGonigal, the TV trainer now onto the field. Harold Sandwich is going to be helped up. I think he's going to be all right. And listen to the crowd give uh, Harold Sandwich his due as he uh, gets back up. He really took a shot. Daniel Huber, the alternate official, stirring on the sidelines, thinking he might get into the game, but it looks like Harold Sandridge is okay after taking probably the big hit of the day. <laughs> Second and four at the 49-yard line. Ken Lacey among all that madness gained six yards. Scott Brown now brings this golden hurricane out of the huddle. Looking over that New Mexico defense. Would he throw on second and four? We'll see. Oh, he's going to hand it off to Lacey. Sweeping right. Lacey across the line of scrimmage. Up to across midfield to the New Mexico 48-yard line. Not enough for the first down. But Chelsea will have a third and short as Ken Lacey gets three. Lacey carrying it twice in a row. Six and then three. Kirk Phillips wide left. David Hersey wide right. Both of them went down, went deep, and were open. We'll see if uh, Scott Brown will uh, take advantage of that. Couple of substitutes for New Mexico in there. Greg Lutz, a substitute defensive tackle in selling Chuck Best for a moment. Richard Mello giving Johnny Jackson the breather. Those two were in on the tackle. Third and one at the New Mexico. 48-yard line. Scott Brown. To his right, takes a hand off to Gunner. He's going to keep it. He's down across the 45. He's got the first down. And Tulsa now will be down to the New Mexico 44-yard line as Scott Brown on the quarterback keeper gets four yards, and TU has the first and ten. Hurricane not biting off big chunks, but they're biting it off consistently. Six, five, six, three, four, the last five plays. So uh, and they're beginning to eat into the New Mexico defensive line. Elsa's fans celebrating along with the fans. 14-14 game. Each team has missed a field goal. First and 10 at the 44. Handoff goes off to the left for Michael Gunner. Maybe a yard up the middle. He was shut down quickly by Kelly Wilson, the nose guard, back in the game. Also, Jake Simpson, a substitute linebacker, spelling Gary Butler in on the tackle. A gain of one for Gunner and leaves Tulsa with a second and nine at the 43. New Mexico doing a good job of settling some people in here in the third quarter. John Neal, the defensive end coach, defensive line coach Jim Washburn, and of course the man we've been talking about, Joe Lee Dunn, who will be the new head coach of New Mexico, uh, coordinating the whole thing. Johnny Jackson checks back in for the Lobos. Defensive coordinator Joe Lee Dunn may be thinking things getting pretty serious now. Second and nine at the 43. Scott Brown back to pass. Looking on the right to the flanker, David Hersey, he's got him! Down around the 35 to the 30, to about the 27-yard line. David Hersey made a fine running catch. He reached up high to pull down the pass, and Tulsa first and 10 at the 27, and Hersey has caught two passes here in this drive. David Hersey's been playing decoy all, all afternoon long, now has three catches on the day for 31 yards, a 16-yarder right there to set it up. First and 10, Tulsa. Tulsa got the football back at its own 32-yard line at the 10:28 mark. Now we're down to 7.55, third quarter. First and 10 at the 27. Scott Brown for Michael Gunner, big hole. Down to the 25, the 20, and he's going to be brought down by Gary Butler and Johnny Jackson at the 19-yard line as Sid Abramowitz and Kurt Steinhauer open up a big hole on the right side. 79 and 80 for the Golden Hurricane. Big block by Abramowitz to spring Gunner loose. Second and two at the 19. Tulsa on the move. The Lobos getting all their big men back in there defensively. Julius Johnson back in at cornerback. Butler and Jackson, Johnny Jackson making that stop. The linebacker position is Michael Gunner found himself in the New Mexico secondary. Second and two at the 19. Now Lacey on a sweep to his left. Oh, and a good defensive play by Jimmy Carter. He really knocked him down hard, and Julius Johnson, the right cornerback, came up to make the play. And Kenny Lacey gets a big nothing on the game. Julius Johnson out of Plano, Texas. Jimmy Carter out of Austin, Texas. A couple of guys about as close to home as they'll get during the season, making a great defensive effort. TU has made its last two third down conversions. This time it's third and two at the 19 of the Lobo. Scott Brown. Well, you don't know what he's going to do here. With that great running attack, they may run it. We'll see if he throws. Third and two. Brown looking back. He wants to throw. Looking on the left side for Kirk Phillips. It's incomplete. 
Good defensive play there by the left cornerback, Sammy Parrish. Huey Chancellor is a strong safety for the Lobos helping out. And CU now will be faced with fourth and two, and Stu Crum is coming off. Super defensive effort by the Lobos. Tulsa with a second and two at the 19 and cannot punch over the first down. They'll have to call on Crum for three. Stu Crum, 21 of 29 during the season, missed a 45-yarder against the wind back in the first half. This will be a 36-yard attempt on the near hash mark. Got Brown, the quarterback, to haul. There's the snap. There's the kick. It is up, and it is good. Tulsa on the board as the Hurricane takes a three-point lead. Two come with a 36-yard field goal. And the Hurricane, with seven minutes and ten seconds left in the third quarter, takes a 17-14 lead. The Justice Bowl 82 continues in just a moment. Tulsa with a three-point lead, but some great football second-half style ahead. Get the five largest banks in Tulsa with assets of at least $100 million. Compare their return on average assets, return on stockholders' equity, and capital-to-assets ratio. You'll find that F&M Bank ranks number one in all three categories. We're the right size at the right time. The F&M Bank and Trust Company. Where business is concerned, we're concerned at F&M. F&M, we're the right size at the right time. Member FDIC. You guys ready? Yeah. Come on, children, sing with me. I know you know this song. And I know, like me, you love Rainbow Bridge. So sing along. We'll put our hands and voices together. Together we can go wrong. Sing along. Two from field goal. Tulsa on top by three. Denny Allen is back to receive the kick. Allen, a junior, running back from Gainesville, Florida. Stu Crum approaching the football. It's high in the air. A high kick down to the New Mexico four-yard line. Allen has it there. He cuts outside of the 10, up to the 15, and finally knocked down at about the 20-yard line. It's coming up to help out on the tackle was Tony Buford. The freshman from St. Louis seeing action with special teams for TU. Also, Kenny Cook, the left cornerback from Bristol, Oklahoma. The TU utilizing some of those young players on the specialty teams. The Lobos have it first and 10 at their 20. As the clock shows, 6.55 left third quarter. Tulsa on top, 17-14. Fairly important series for New Mexico now. The uh, Golden Hurricane have begun to move the football and have taken the three-point lead after New Mexico had all of the momentum there in the second quarter. David Osborne, the quarterback. Allen and Johnson are the running backs behind him. Offensive line, eight, Carter, Zamprelli, Elliott, and D. Young, as well as the tight end, John Lane. Osborne on the give. Allen sweeping to the right side. Denny Allen has pretty good yardage out across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Mike Womack into the game on pursuit, the right defensive tackle helping out, as well as Robert Estes, the right cornerback, but a good first down gain for the Lobos. They'll have a second and three at their own 27. Womack, a junior college transfer out of Golden West Junior College, Los Alamitos, California. He's a junior and uh, will see quite a bit of action next year when a couple of these seniors move on for Tulsa. Robert Mitchell checking in the flanker for the Lobos, replacing Keith McGee. Also, Mike Drury on the left side. It's put in for Derwin Williams, so... Bill Morrison getting some young players into the ball game right now. Of course, Mitchell, a senior, trying to see some action here in what could be his last game. Jury, of course, has some action left at New Mexico. 
The pitch is to Allen, sweeping left. He's going to go to the far sideline. She's knocked out of bounds. Oh, and if we got a flag on the play, we may have a late hit by the Golden Hurricane. Robert Estes, Tyler Texas Jr. may be the player with the late hit there. We'll wait for the officials ruling on it. Vance Carlson now moving to the center of the field. Let's hear from the official on the call. cost you a bundle, Bob Stevens. It'll mark the ball all the way out to the 44-yard line, but only the second Tulsa penalty of the day. They had one holding call earlier, and then the roughness. Two penalties for 25. That turns Allen's two-yard sweep into a 17-yard gain and sets up the Lobo. A local guy from Albuquerque checks back in, Mike Carter, the 5'9 senior, who gained 722 yards this year. David Osborne giving it off instead of the first man through Michael Johnson. He's got a couple of yards off right tackle following Donnie G. Young. And also the right tackle, rather the tight end, John Lane to the right side. And TU there to stop him after a two-yard gain. It will be second and eight at the 46. Again, New Mexico not making it in any big chunks, but they're trying to get something started, get themselves uh, down in Tulsa territory, and uh, they can either stuff it in there or uh, let Pete Park have a shot at it. Clock running with 6.05. Second and eight at the 46. The handoff, Mike Carter off the left side. He'll get about three out to the 49-yard line to the Lobos approaching midfield. So it'll be third and five now. New Mexico continues to methodically push that ball down the field. Mike Carter getting the football. He was injured earlier in the ball game. Seems to be 100%. We're still checking on Denny Allen. He's being watched over by all of the New Mexico training staff. We'll find out and get more word on him later. Third down. Ten yards to go at the 44. Osborne. Let's check it. It's third and five at the 49. Osborne back. Now he hands it off to Carter on the draw. Flag fly as Carter breaks through for five or six. Uh, we're going to have some flags on the play, Bob. And again, it looked like some motion in that New Mexico backfield. Well, there was also all kinds of movement up on the line. We'll wait to see whether or not uh, uh, they rule that Tulsa was jumping or whether New Mexico drew them offside. Let's go down to Vance Carl. Vance have been perfect all afternoon. A little trouble with the referee's microphone. I guess that's going to happen from time to time. Just the third and ten at the 44. The call was a legal procedure against New Mexico, so that'll set up the third and ten. Lobos need a first down. Osborne brings them out. There's the snap. He's back to throw, looking left side. Pass intended for Derwin Williams. Oh, and he just couldn't hold on. Williams gave it a good try to the outside. The ball was thrown, and it was catchable, Bob. But Williams just couldn't tuck it away, and it's incomplete. It'll be a fourth and ten. New Mexico couldn't get it going again. The penalty shut them down. The Lobos have been penalized seven times for 40 yards in the ballgame. Now Pete Parks is into the game. He's punted twice for a 38-yard average, his longest 40 so far. It'll be Paul Zamprelli in the deep snap. The kick is downfield. It's a high one. Brent Dennis to the 19. Breaks loose to the 20. Up to the 25. To the 28. 30-yard line. Now he's all the way up beyond the 35. And to the 38-yard line. An excellent return by Tulsa's Brent Dennis, the 5A junior from Blanchard, Oklahoma. Brent Dennis, an all-conference academic player as well. Took three. It looked like they had him about the 30-yard line, but Dennis got away and got eight more to set up the hurricane. Tulsa will have a first and ten at their 38 when we come back after this timeout. The score is the University of Tulsa 17 and the University of New Mexico 14. You're listening to Justice Bowl 82. The American Theater Company, Getty, and KJRH TV are proud to present a musical adaptation of Charles Dickens' famous holiday story. A Christmas Carol. Tickets are now on sale for this family musical, which runs from December 3rd through December 24th at the Tulsa Performing Arts Center. And as a special Christmas gift to you, Getty and KJRH-TV are offering special discount coupons with $1 off any adult ticket. 
Just stop by your nearest Getty station throughout the Tulsa area and ask for your free Dickens Christmas Carol discount coupon. There's no purchase necessary. The American Theater Company's presentation of Dickens Christmas Carol, a great way for your family to get into the spirit of the holiday season. Announcing two new reasons to come charging into Getty, Visa and MasterCard. America's most popular credit cards are now accepted at participating Getty stations. It's easier than ever for you to get a tank full of Getty gasoline. Next time you need a fill-up, take your cap off to Getty. Four minutes and 55 seconds left. Third quarter, Tulsa, 17-14 lead. Bob, the penalty really hurt New Mexico. Boy, it did. It really killed the drive. New Mexico's had to fight that penalty bug all the way through the ball game. Tulsa only two penalties for 25. New Mexico, seven for 40. Tulsa with 222 yards of total offense. It's interesting, in each of the three games that they have uh, had over 300 yards of total offense, they've won the game uh, versus Texas Tech in the Sun Bowl versus Georgia Tech at a 26-12 win and against Ole Miss in 1964 when they won 14-7. Hamilton into the ball game for Tulsa to replace Michael Gunner. Eddie, a 5'8 junior out of Pittsburgh, Texas, 137 yards this year with one touchdown, his longest, a 21-yard run. He'll get the handoff on first down. Hamilton, off left tackle, has maybe four. Out to about the Tulsa 42-yard line. Brought down hard there by Johnny Jackson and Ray Hornsex, the free safety coming up to help out. And it'll be second and six for TU at its own 42-yard line. Nothing the matter with Michael Gutter. They just want to give Eddie Hamilton a couple of carries and give Michael a breather. Clock running. 4.45 left. Second and six at the 42. Scott Brown bringing them out. Now he gives it off for Kenny Lacey. Lacey off left tackle. He's going to be out across the 45 to the 47-yard line. He'll get a guy about five on the play. Sammy Parrish, the left quarterback, coming up to help out. Al Greenwood actually caught him from behind the left defensive tackle, but Tulsa now will have a third and short at its own 47-yard line. Greenwood makes it. Behind the left defensive tackle, but Tulsa now will have a third and short at its own 47-yard line. Greenwood makes a super play. You don't catch Kenny Lacey from behind very often. Tulsa now setting up third and one, where they are six out of ten on third down. New Mexico, five of nine, so both teams have done well in third down conversion. Third and one at the 47. Handoff goes to Eddie Hamilton. He's got the first down up the middle. He's across into Lobo territory to the 49-yard line. Nick Johnson is spelled both Sammy Terrace and Ray Hornsack, at cornerback and free safety, in on the tackle, as well as Steve Souter telling Huey Kessler at strong safety. So, Tulsa gets the first down into Lobo territory. What a super job done by both offensive lines in this ball game. Both teams well over the 200-yard mark offensively as we are still in the third quarter. And they're doing a great job against a couple of good defense. Michael Gunner back in the raw game to see you. Scott Brown still the Tulsa quarterback with skip back on the sideline. He's back to throw downfield. It's going long. Kirk Phillips. Oh, a dandy catch. Oh, what a great catch by Phillips. All the way down to the 17-yard line. Scott Brown put it up high for grabs, and Kirk Phillips made a super grab. Oh, what a play by the Spyro, Oklahoma. Young man, Kirk Phillips, the senior, playing in his last ball game. He was the leading receiver for Tulsa, only 18 catches for 374 yards. But it's just about 20 yards or more every time he catches the football. That time for 32. He's got three for 81 in this game, as long as 32, the one we just told you about. First and 10, Tulsa at the Lobo 17-yard line. Big play. Oh, super big play for Tulsa. Michael Gunner gets the handoff. Off right guard. He'll get maybe two or three down to the 15, maybe the 14, following behind the big 6-1 senior, Steve Cox from Liberal, Kansas. There to meet him is Chuck Best, the big junior of New Mexico from Plano, Texas. And that man again, Johnny Jackson, the sophomore linebacker who seems to be all over the place all the time. He's got my vote right now as defensive player of the game. He has really been in a lot of play. He's kind of the defensive quarterback out there for New Mexico. too. very unusual for a sophomore to be a leader like he is. Boy, I 
Take to be a running back in the Western Athletic Conference for the next two years. <laughs> Looking at that guy. Number 47, what a star he is. That's why everybody in that conference throws the ball. <laughs> Guys like Danny Jackson. Might be. Second and seven, 14 yard line. Ken Lacey the handoff. He's got a couple. Off right tackle behind Sita Bramowitz. But again, Chuck Fest there with the defensive clown can do now. Remember now, he is on replacing Skip Ash, who was injured early in this quarter. We're not quite sure. Skip is walking around. He appears to be just about ready to come back in a ball game, but Scott Brown's under control. Well, I know that Scott Brown's parents are <laughs> experiencing a proud moment right to offense. Third and five, 12 yard line. Scott Brown back to pass, looking to throw. It is Vincent. He was looking for the backup tight end, Kevin Harlan. The sophomore from Buckner City, Oklahoma, into the ball game for third Steinhauer in the passing situation. And TU will go for another field goal here as Steve Crum toppled the field. Steve Crum hit one just a little bit ago. They've got him into it. I thought hey, this one will be quite a bit shorter. Just 29 yards. Could be a tip shot. So Scott Brown out. It is just. Tosca on the Steve Crum 29 yard field goal. Takes a 20 to 14 lead with 235 left here in the third quarter. So Steve Crum has found the range twice, Bob. And New Mexico now really has to get something going offensively. The Lobos have not done much since early in the second quarter when they took the 14 7 lead. They really have it. Salt has controlled the offensive line of scrimmage particularly. And and New Mexico does need to get something started. I expect Osborne to go up top and start to make things happen for the Lobo. Felt the crowd in their blue and gold here celebrating the Lobo fans in their red and silver. This press box here is so high, very difficult to see the field. You really feel it also leans over the field a bit. You really do that if you're almost right on top of the action as opposed to sitting back. Looking toward the east across this mass of 47,000 people. No, no shows today. A guaranteed sellout, and they all showed up for a great football game. Well, you from now. Everything, everyone discussed all week long, and it's been a super ball game. We'll see if the Lobos can get back in it. Steve Crum signals for the kickoff. He has it teed up. He kicks it long down to the New Mexico one-yard line. Carl Raven has it at the one. Cuts up at the 10, outside of the 15, and gets up to about the 19-yard line. There on the defensive play for Tulsa, Joe Dixon, the left defensive tackle. Also, Steve Ford, some of the big guys in there, helping out on the special team. Joe Dixon's going to be a good one. He's just a freshman out of Pocolo, Oklahoma. 6'3", 240. Mama's been feeding him for a long time. Blocked the field goal this year. CU blocked three of them as the team. Not the Lobos, first and 10 at their own 19. They've got a long way to go, 81 yards away from Taylor. First down, Osborne to his left, keeping on the option, cuts up the field, maybe a couple of yards. We'll call it two up to the 21 yard line. Clearing the way on the side was Al Greenwood. Let's check it on the left side was Mike A. Carter, the left guard number 70, the left tackle 7 8, number 50. His backup, Scott Steen from Wheatwood, Colorado, has a brother, senior defensive end Derek Steen on this New Mexico team. It'll be second and eight for the Lobo at their own 21 yard line. Osborne wants to throw. Looking right side, Keith McGee, he's got him. Up in the 35, McGee stumbles forward to the 37 yard line. Robert Estes beaten on the clever on the money by David Osborne, Bob Stevens. Four catches for 54 yards. McGee is a dandy out at the wide receiver spot. He is a senior playing in his last game for the Lobos. Great for him to get a chance to play in a bowl game as a senior. First and 10 at the 37 on the 16 yard game. Osborne back to throw again. This time looking left side for Derwin Williams. It is too tall near the left sideline. And it'll fall incomplete. It'll be second and 10 at the 37. And see you getting some of the defensive players into the ball game, Bob, and doing a good job. Rogers Hayden, Tulsa Hale Jr., 6'2", 231 pounder, now playing the nose guard. Really put him some heat on Osborne. Really forced him to throw that ball over Williams' head. Good rush also by Mike Womack on the right side, as well as Carl Pendleton. Second and 10 at the 37. Osborne back to throw for the third straight time. He's got Williams on the left side, up across the 40 to the 45-yard line. Brent Dennis and 
Kenny Gibbs on the tackle. And New Mexico gets eight on the play. They'll be faced with a third and two. David Osborne, three straight passes after running the option. So it's obvious now that uh, they're going to try to move the football and move it in a hurry down by six. Third and two at the 45. Osborne now, 10 of 18 for 136 yards, a 55% clip. Osborne will keep this time on third and two. He's got maybe a yard. Bob Babbitt and Cliff Abbott came up from their linebacker position to make the stop. And now the Lobos will be faced with a fourth and one. Their own 46-yard line, Bob, and I have to think at this stage of the game, they're going to go. Yeah, in the first quarter, they had a fourth and inches and decided to go ahead and kick it. But now we're far into the ball game. If the Lobos can't get this yard, uh, I've got to imagine Joe Morrison thinks they shouldn't be 10-1 in the first place. Mike Carter on the left. Carl Raven on the right, the running back. Man in motion to the near side is the flanker, Keith McGee. Here's the gift for Raven. Raven, big hole. He's got the first down across midfield to the Tulsa 48-yard line. So a big hole opened up, and the Mexico gets the first down as Carl Raven keeps it off tackle for six yards. Big, big first down for the Lobos as they keep the momentum going. Had they not gotten that first down, they'd have turned it over at midfield, and Tulsa would have to be in great position for either a field goal and a nine-point lead or a touchdown and blow it open. First and ten, Lobos. Tulsa 48-yard line. This drive started back at their own 19-yard line about seven plays ago. David Osborne pitches right side. Mike Johnson on the sweep. Across the 45, knocked out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. Carl Pendleton rode him out of bounds. Robert Esty coming up to help. A gain of four, it'll be second and six. You get a lot of guy like Carl Pendleton riding on him and go down. 234 pounds, senior from Hopkins, first and second. Pretty good blocking on the right side by the Lobos, though. Johnny D. Young, the right tackle, and John Lane, the senior tight end from Pueblo, Colorado. A lot of Colorado players on this team. Tulsa, other Oklahoma schools, recruiting Texas heavily. New Mexico recruiting California and Colorado quite a bit, but they've got some great homegrown talent as well. Second and six, 44 yard line of Tulsa. Hand off, Carl Raven up the middle. He's got an opening across the 40 to the 39 yard line. And it'll be a third and one for the Lobos as Carl Raven has gotten a lever on his last two carries, Bob, and he's doing the job coming off the bench. He really is a good young ball player, Carl Raven. Just a sophomore out of Houston. 5'8", 163. Boy, they're growing short out there. They, they have got a bunch of backs that are 5'8", 5'9", and, and not real big. The boy, they're shooting for the other. He backs up Michael Johnson of San Diego, the junior, who's a second-team All-Western Athletic Conference selection. Third and one, 39-yard line. New Mexico looking for the first down. Osborne keeping. He's got the first down. Fumble! Fumble! The ball is loose! Touchdown! May have gotten the football! It looks like number 68, Carl Pendleton, Brian Bruner, and Cliff Abbott on the hit, and a big turnover, and Tulsa gets back the football. Second turnover of the ball game for the New Mexico Lobos. Tulsa cashed one of them in for a touchdown earlier, and a big, big turnover as Carl Pendleton leads it up for Tulsa. That'll do it for the third quarter. The Roman Hurricane up by six. Let's get out to the sidelines for an update from our buddy from KOB, Mike Roberts. Just about what was expected by the local coaching staff. They knew they couldn't let Tulsa get too close to the three points for automatic. Actually, with these two great offensive ball clubs, I really expected a little more scoring. But that's a tough defense Tulsa has. The final 15 minutes coming up. After three quarters of play, the Golden Hurricane at TU 20, the Lobos up New Mexico 14. Justice Bowl 82 continues with the fourth quarter coming right up. The 1982 Justice Bowl football classic is a pre-recorded creation of a game that should have happened but never did. The Vault, a private high-security facility to store your papers and valuables, from jewelry to gold to silver and collectibles. The vault offers ultimate protection in sophisticated surroundings. Select from small security boxes on up to uncommonly large boxes. The vault even offers case rifle storage and fireproof, high-security computer data storage. A 6,000-pound steel door, a guard, and video surveillance. 
a personal key system that ensures no one can open your vault box with you. And the vault is the only place offering high security short-term storage. Open seven days a week, the vault brings you the advantage of ready access. And there's even a handsome conference room for your private convenience. Check out the vault today at 71st and Lewis in South Point Center or call 496-1048. You'll be impressed. Secure, convenient, private. The Vault, meeting the special needs of individuals and business. Call today. They're open, 496-1048. TU's defense forcing a big turnover to start the, uh, rather to end the third quarter, now starting the fourth quarter. Carl Pendle in the man in the spotlight, the 6 2 34 senior from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. 43 tackles, a couple of fumble recoveries, and a blocked field goal during the season. And, Bob, that was a big, big turnover there. It really was. Scott Brown, three out of six, and leading the Hurricane attack for 54 yards. Osborne was all three of six, but for just 36 yards. The Hurricane got the only six points on the board in the third quarter, two two-crown field goals. First and ten for TU, out of tone, 33-yard line. On first and ten, the pitch on the sweep right side. Michael Gunner's got some running room. Out across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Knocked down there by Julius Johnson, the right cornerback. Also, Johnny Jackson, the right linebacker, helping out. A whack defensive player of the year, third-team AP All-America. A leader in tackles his freshman and sophomore year. Fourth Hill City Player of the Week two times. As a sophomore, the WAC Player of the Week five times, twice as a freshman, and the WAC Rookie of the Year last year. What an amazing athlete he is. Boy, he, he does it all. Uh, I understand he even pumps up the football before the ball game. And here comes Skip Ass onto the field. The Golden Hurricane getting their quarterback back. Number 12, Ass replacing Scott Brown. Boy, Scott Brown did a good oh. job while he was in there as well. Super job, but you want the senior in there in the fourth quarter. Second and two at the Tulsa 41-yard line. Skip Ash on the quarterback keeper, maybe a yard or so, out to about the 42. It'll set up a third and one as he was knocked down hard by the big nose guard, Kelly Wilson, from Carlsbad, New Mexico, the 16 senior. Ash showing no ill effects. Apparently just the rest helped that leg. As we said, arthroscopic surgery earlier this season. Skip. 10 carries in the ball game for 13 yards. His longest five so far. We'll see if they run it or throw it on third and one from the 42. Ash is back to throw, looking for David Hershey on the right side. Incomplete. Interesting that the Hurricane would turn around and throw the football on third and one. We thought uh, more than likely you'd give it to Lacey and then bowl ahead or, or do anything but uh, back up and throw the football. Interesting play call. It'll be a fourth down for Tulsa. Tulsa will not go for it on fourth and one at the 42. At their end of the field, if it was across midfield, I would have to think they would, but Steve Cook is on the punt. Cook has punted the ball three times today. Well, actually, twice for 44 and a half yards, his longest 48 so far. The New Mexico punter, Bobby Ferguson, has knocked it away three times today. There's the snap and the kick. It's a high one to the New Mexico 17. Johnny Parrish on the return. Gets free at the 20, stumbles ahead, twisting and turning to about the 24-yard line. Helping out on the tackle there was Johnny Horton, a sophomore running back for TU, as well as... John Cooper of Tulsa Memorial High School, the sophomore free safety. So the Lobos have it now. First and 10 at their own 24-yard line. And, Bob, they've got to go to work here offensively. Now their band getting behind their fans who came all the way from Albuquerque and from all over the state of New Mexico. Lobos need to get the offense moving. They've had nothing since the second quarter. Osborne, the quarterback, he's gone all the way to the Lobos. First and 10 at the 24. He keeps her on the left side. He's got running room across the 35 to the 30 and up to the 31-yard line where Kevin Lilly and Bob Babbitt finally caught up with him. And Osborne keeping there for seven yards. It'll be second and three. Tell you what, if you can figure out a way to stop Osborne, you can really shut this Lobo attack down. He carries the football. He throws the football. He does it all. Bill Morrison, his offensive coordinator, Frank Sadler pacing the sideline. TU defensive man Mike Knoll doing the same, as well as John Cooper on the other side. Second and three at the 31. Osborne back to throw. Looking right side. McGee has it. 
He's across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Keith McGee went downfield, turned outside, carved at about the 39, and then got about three more yards. It's an 11-yard completion and the first down for the Lobos. Again, if it's not Osborne keeping, it's throwing a short pass. McGee getting free to catch that one. Osborne in the ball game now is 11 out of 19 for 147 yards. McGee has five catches for 65. First and 10, New Mexico on the move at their 42. They've moved the ball 18 yards in three plays. Osborne is back to throw. He's looking to throw the bomb. Way downfield at about the 35. Oh, a penalty flag. It was intended for McGee. It's going to be pass interference on Tulsa. Oh, a big play in the Hurricane defense. Call for the infraction. Looked like Timmy Gibbs, Bob, on the penalty. It looked like Timmy Gibbs. Will be called for the infraction the sophomore from Bixby, a suburb of Tulsa. Jimmy Gibbs going up to the ball, but he got a pretty big piece of the G. Let's go down and field to Vance Carlson for the call. That's what it was. 25 yards on the penalty. It sets New Mexico up at the Tulsa 33. TU only three penalties, but for 50 yards. First and 10, New Mexico at the Tulsa 33-yard line. Maybe one of the biggest plays in the game right there. Osborne looking to throw. Left side, Derwin Williams in the play. Williams just did a little sideline pattern there. 12 minutes left in the game. The clock stopped. And that one fell incomplete as Osborne just put a two saw for his fine split end. The 6'3 junior, Derwin Williams from Brownwood, Texas. The best average in... Yardage on the team this year, 18.7 for catch. And now they come out quickly again on second and 10 from the 33. Handoff. Mike Carter, big hole up the middle. Across the 30, down to the Tulsa 26-yard line. He comes up limping, but he's got a seven-yard gain. And New Mexico now will have third and short. Michael Carter, that leg bothered him again. 10 carries for 45 for... Carter, but he comes up limping, and they're going to uh, have him limp off the field and bring in youngster Willie Corral. He is a freshman from Tallahassee, Florida. His first appearance in the ball game. Third and three at the 26. 11-29, showing on the clock. Corral gets the pitcher on the left side. He's got running room. He's across the 20 to the 15, inside the 10, and down to the seven-yard line. Willie Corral, the young freshman of New Mexico, and it was the TU secondary that had to make the stop the free safety, Kelly Beasley, and the strong safety, Jimmy Gibbs. And the Lobos have first and goal at the seventh. Willie Corral, an eight-and-a-half-yard average on the season. He busted one for 63. One carry for 19 yards. Today, of course, that's his long run by any Lobo player this afternoon. Lobos now, first and goal at the seven. Their fans in the red and silver are getting on their feet. They get a chance to tie it up and go ahead with the point after. Osborne on the option, looking to throw. Right side, John Lane, incomplete. Lane about two yards short of the goal line. And a good defensive play there made by the right cornerback, Robert Estes, who came up to make contact with him just as the ball got there. A perfectly timed hit by the two-year letterman from Tyler, Texas. Very interesting to see now what the Lobos do. Second down and goal from the seventh. The first down, a number of different things you can do. They are limited a little bit now on second down. They crossed the 300-yard mark in total offense. 171 on the ground, 147 in the air, 318 yards for the Lobos. Second and goal at the seventh. Osborne went to Lane last time. Now he's back looking again. Right side, John Lane! in the fourth quarter. We are tied at 20-20. John Lane springing free in the end zone. Osborne must have seen something the last time they ran the play that tipped it off that if they went right back to it, ran the same play, it would work. Pete Parks on for the kick. 45 of 46 during the season. Two out of two today. 
There's the snap. The kick is up. And it's good. Ten minutes and 42 seconds left in the football game. Justice Bowl 82 has the New Mexico Lobos on top of the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. 21-20. It looks like we're headed for a great finish. We'll be back after these timeouts. Driving all night in the rain and the weather can't see 10 feet ahead. My arms are sore, my body's tired, and my feet are feeling like lead. There's only two reasons I push this red clear across the U.S. of A. One, I need the paycheck, and two, I get to eat my rainbow bread on the way. I'm an 18-wheeler, reset wheeler, back taking the son of a gun. That's when I grab me some fatty cake, a good fresh rainbow bread. I'm an 18-wheeler, reset wheeler, when I'm off the road. That good bread, fresh bread, can turn up peace alone. Bob Stevens back with Bob Carpenter and Mike Roberts. Damon Carter Stadium, Fort Worth, Texas. Seven plays, 76 yards, two minutes and 43 seconds after the punt. New Mexico gets the touchdown, probably the big play of the whole drive, though, the interference call against Kenny Gibbs. It gave the Lobos 25 extra yards. They were struggling to get out of their own end, Bob, and it got them down to the TU 33-yard line. Now on for the kickoff. It is Pete Parks, the senior. He runs up to the football, and it's downfield. A high, long kick. Kirk Phillips at his own one. Breaking up field. Cuts outside to the left at the 10 to the 15. And he gets out to about the 19-yard line before being knocked down there by Wes Henson, a reserve right defensive end for the Lobos, as well as Steve Souter, a reserve strong safety. Nick Johnson also there, a sophomore left cornerback. Critical series now for the New Mexico defense. Tulsa's offense has proven they can move the football, even though they're on the short end of a 21-20 score. Total offense, New Mexico 325, Tulsa 281. It is not unlike a hurricane to be outgained in a ball game. New Mexico on top by one, but it is, again, a critical series for their defense. Neither team has broken a big, long gain in this game. First and 10, TU 19. Get past the quarterback. Delta's going to sweep it to the right. Michael Gunner gets the pitch. He's got running room. He's across the 20, up to the 25, to the 27-yard line. A good sweep to the right by Tulsa. Jimmy Carter was taken completely out of the play by Sid Abramowitz. And then Johnny Jackson, the linebacker, and the cornerback, Julius Johnson, had to help on the tackle. Eight-yard gain. Michael Gunner's 16 carries for only 83 yards. For any other back, that's a great afternoon. For Michael Gunner, it's a... Best 83 yards. Talking about a guy who's been over 200 a couple times this year. Second and two at the 27. Get pass, giving off to Ken Lacey. Not much there on the left side. John Kaspersky and David Pearson trying to lead the way on the left side. But Al Greenwood and Mark Eastam set them up. Only a gain of one. It'll be third and one for TU. 28 yards. Make the big play right here. Momentum going all their way. They'll get some great field position and a chance to run up the score a bit and then put some margin between themselves and the hurricane. TU 7 and 12. 7 up 12 on third down. Like John Keith told us before the game, this New Mexico defense not big. They just make the big play. They've been doing it all year long. Third and one at the 28. Skip pass for Ken Lacey. He's got the first down. He's across the 30, up to the 34-yard line. Ken Lacey almost got into the secondary. Gary Butler, the linebacker, pulled him down from behind. But it's a first down for Tulsa in the hurricane now. Eight of 13 on first down situations, and Lacey has 63. On 16 carries and 16 first downs now for the Golden Hurricane. Tulsa now on the move. This drive started back at their own 19. They're up to the 34. Get back, bringing them out. Nine minutes showing on the clock. Asters back to throw, looking for Steinhauer. Right side, incomplete. Kurt 
Steinhauer tried to turn it inside about seven or eight yards upfield. TU playing to leave themselves with a second and short, and Steinhauer just couldn't reach the low pass from Skip Ash. Interesting call on first down. The Hurricane having some great success on the ground. Gunter and Lacey are running for eight and six the last couple of times they've had the football, and then going ahead and opening up on first down. Interesting play call by Larry Coker. Second and 10, 34-yard line. Skip pass. Second man through. Michael Gunner's got running room across the 35, up to the 40, to the 42-yard line. Michael Gunner rambling for eight yards on the tackle was Johnny Jackson and the free safety Ray Hornfeck, two of the guys that have made a tremendous number of tackles for the Lobos this year. Gunner rambling for eight yards. Now gives him 91 on the ball game. Tension drawing here. Tulsa trying to drive it down, trailing by one, 21-20. The Lobos are the only score of the fourth quarter. Third and two, 42-yard line. Skip ass back to throw. Looking for Kirk Phillips, left side, incomplete. Skip ass. Ball may have been tipped on the way out there, Bob. Mark Easton, the big left defensive end. At 6'2", 193, got up in the air, maybe got a piece of the football. Since the skipper's come back into the ball game, he is 0 for 3 since returning, and he really hasn't looked real good throwing the football. End of the game to punch for Tulsa, Steve Cook. He kicked the ball three times for 43.3, his longest 48. Deep snapper will be David Imes. There's the snap and the kick. It's not a real long kick to the New Mexico 20. Harris with the football there, cuts outside, up across the 25, to maybe the 27-yard line. 38 yards on the kick by Steve Cook, by far his shortest of the afternoon. Harris takes it to the 27, New Mexico, up by one, now 73 yards away from another one. A big offensive series for the Lobos, but probably a bigger defensive series for the University of Tulsa. They trail by a point and a touchdown drive would really turn things around here and put New Mexico in the driver's seat. First and 10, 27-yard line. David Osborne, the quarterback. Split back option, veer type offense. Handoff goes to Michael Johnson. He's got good yardage across the 30 to about the 33. In on the tackle there, Blake Borkman, the Dallas senior, and Brian Burroughs, the St. Louis senior. University of New Mexico showing a great tension for being able to hold on to the football for long periods of time. This would be the time to do it as we approach the seven-minute mark in the ball game. A nice long drive here, even if they don't score, Bob, would put them in great shape. Clock will show right around seven minutes when they get the playoff. Second and four, good yardage on first down at the 33-yard line. David Osborne back to throw, looking for his tight end. John Lane incomplete, and a good, good defensive play as Cliff Abbott, who just came back in the ball game for Brian Burroughs, got outside to knock the pass away, or else it might have been a first down for Lane. Cliff Abbott, the only returning linebacker for the Hurricane. They lose Burroughs, they lose Yorkman, they lose Babbitt, but Cliff Abbott from Liberal Kansas will be back to lead the charges next year. Third and four, 33 yard line. Clock shows 6.49 left, fourth quarter. Lobo 21, Hurricane 20. Osborne will keep it left side. Oh, maybe three. And it'll be fourth and one out at the 36 yard line, Bob. And TU stacked it up defensively that time. Yeah, it's a long one yard. Tom Baldwin making a great play. The Lansing, Illinois Junior College transfer making a super play, big number 90, to stop Osborne a yard, maybe a little more than a yard short. New Mexico is going to kick the football away. They're confident in their defense, and they're going to let TU work from deep in its own territory. T. Parks is on for the punt. Today, Parks... T. Parks is on for the punt. Today, Parks has punted three times for 38.3, his longest 40. Good snap, the ball is in the air. Oh, what a great, great kick. All the way back inside the 20, Brent Dennis at the 18, and he's going to be knocked down with no return. Oh, a beautiful 48-yard kick by Pete Parks of the Lobos. 
a super kick and great coverage by the Mexico special team, Brent Dennis, who is in the top 15 in the nation in punt returns this year with over a 10-yard average, gets nothing. The Lobos have a one-point lead with 6.06 left in the ball game. We'll be back after this timeout. You're listening to the 82 Justice Ball with the Lobos over the Hurricane by one. A surprise largest Tulsa bank with assets of at least $100 million, F&M Bank ranks number one in return on average assets, return on stockholders' equity, and capital to asset ratio. In business, F&M performs. We're the right size at the right time. The F&M Bank and Trust Company. This is The American Theater Company, Getty, and KJRH TV are proud to present a musical adaptation of Charles Dickens' famous holiday story, A Christmas Carol. Tickets are now on sale for this family musical, which runs from December 3rd through December 24th at the Tulsa Performing Arts Center. And as a special Christmas gift to you, Getty and KJRH TV are offering special discount coupons with $1 off any adult ticket. Just stop by your nearest Getty station throughout the Tulsa area and ask for your free Dickens Christmas Carol discount coupon. There's no purchase necessary. The American Theatre Company's presentation of Dickens Christmas Carol, a great way for your family to get into the spirit of the holiday season. Announcing two new reasons to come charging into Getty, Visa and MasterCard. America's most popular credit cards are now accepted at participating Getty stations. It's easier than ever for you to get a tank full of Getty gasoline. Next time you need a fill up, take your cap off to Getty. Six minutes and six seconds left in this 82 Justice Ball. What a battle it has been. The teams have never been more than a touchdown apart. The Mexico over Tulsa this time, 21 20 with 606 left, and Tulsa with the football. Total offense figures, it's kind of surprising. They didn't think the two teams could be over 300 yards each, but they are. New Mexico at 353 total low. So now at 304. New Mexico, 199 yards on the ground, 154 through the air. Tulsa, 179 and 125. First and 10, Tulsa at the 18-yard line. Get past the keeper. He's got a hole. He's up across the 20 to the 25. Get past, pull down at the 28-yard line. A 10-yard gain on first and 10 for Tulsa on the quarterback keeper. During the season, Ash carried the ball 139 times for 367, a 2.7 average with four touchdowns. His average is just over a yard of carry this afternoon until that one. Skipper getting the first down and moving to you out of their own end. First and 10 now off the 28. They started after 18. Skip passes back to throw. He's looking for Lacey out of the backfield. Oh, he underthrew him. Lacey was circling around into the left lap. The ball was underthrown, incomplete. It'll be second and ten. Play that now 0 for 4. Yes, 0 for 4 for Skip Ash since he's come back from the injury. Uh, would not be surprised to see Scott Brown before it's over because, as you say, Skip's really not throwing the ball all that well. Second and ten for Tulsa. At its own 28-yard line. He has to move the football. Skip out, back to throw. That's up. Intercepted. Ray Hornsback for New Mexico. Hornsback at the 38, grabbed it. He's down inside the 35, the 30, to the 25-yard line. And the sophomore from Tucson has his fifth interception of the year. He returned one for a touchdown against Air Force. 99 yards, which met the ball game. And he's done it again for the Lobos. Hornsback leaping in front of Kevin Harlan, the second tight end for the Golden Hurricane, to make that interception. He returns at 13 yards, first down to Mexico. If they can shove one home here, you can just about Katie bar the door and give this Justice Bowl trophy to the Lobo. The Tulsa defense now has to dig in. The New Mexico offense desperately wants another touchdown to take control of this football game. First and 10 at the Tulsa 25. Hand off, Mike Johnson, he's across the 20, down to the 15-yard line. Oh, New Mexico's really got some momentum now. 
Boy, that big, big turnover has got him wound up on the far side of the field that a Mexico fan in their red and silver. Kelly Beasley may have saved the touchdown with the tackle at the 15 because Johnson was in the Tulsa secondary. First and 10, 15 yard line. Osborne brings them out quickly. Hand off Mike Carter. He's got running room to the 10, the 87 yard line. Michael Carter, Kelly Beasley again on the tackle, and New Mexico getting into the Tulsa secondary. These are the biggest chunks of yardage they've been able to bite off on the ground all afternoon, and they're inside the TU 10 again. A touchdown here, but the way New Mexico's played defense this afternoon could just put it away. Second and two at the Tulsa seven-yard line. They've got to get to just inside the five for the first and goal. Carter coming out of the ball game for New Mexico after that blast off tackle. Willie Terrell will replace it. And it's Terrell on the handoff. Oh, he hit hard right at the line of scrimmage. Kevin Lilly and Brian Bruner, a couple of sophomores out of Tulsa High School, really unloaded on the freshman Willie Terrell, and he really went down hard. Boy, welcome to the Justice Bowl. First time he touches the ball, he goes for 19. This time, he goes nowhere. Third and two now. Big play. If they get the first down, they're going to be looking great for a touchdown. If they don't get it, they might opt for the field goal. Third and two. Osborne, back to throw, looking into the end zone, up the grab, go, oh, it's incomplete. Kelly Beasley, Timmy Gibbs, and Brent Dennis were all back there. They tried the big, tall pass for the tight end, John Lane, and he couldn't get up high enough. Lane caught the one pass for the touchdown a little earlier. 6-1 senior out of Pueblo, Colorado, brings up a fourth down and two, and Osborne. Just a little bit uh, disturbed with what he sees at the line. He's going to try to audible his way out of it. Osborne at the line. Long count. Long count. Oh, flags are flying. It's going to be delay of game against New Mexico. Well, it's obvious, Bob, what they were trying to do there. They wanted to draw TU off sides and get the half the distance and the first down, but the Hurricanes did not come across the line of scrimmage, so that'll move them back to the 12. And it'll be fourth and seven, and Pete Parks is on for the field goal attempt. Great discipline by the TU defensive line. Blankenship, Lilly, Broom, Baldwin, and Carlton to stay at home. There's the call from Vance Carlson. Fourth down, and now seven from the 12. And that sure takes an offensive weapon away from the Lobos. Pete Parks on for the extra point. Rather, for the field goal. It'll be a 29-yard attempt. There's the snap. It is up, and it is good. New Mexico with a 24 to 20 lead. With 157 left to go in the ball game. So we'll take a timeout and come back with what guarantees to be a tremendous finish. The Lobos on top of the Hurricane by 4, 24-20. Justice Bowl 82 continues in a moment. Vault, a private, high-security facility to store your papers and valuables, from jewelry to gold to silver and collectibles. The Vault offers ultimate protection in sophisticated surroundings. Select from small security boxes on up to uncommonly large boxes. The Vault even offers cased rifle storage and fireproof, high-security computer data storage. A 6,000-pound steel door, a guard, and video surveillance a personal key system that ensures no one can open your vault box but you. And the vault is the only place offering high-security short-term storage. Open seven days a week, the vault brings you the advantage of ready access and is even a handsome conference room for your private convenience. Check out the vault today at 71st and Lewis in South Point Center or call 496-1048. You'll be impressed. Secure, convenient, private. The Vault. Meeting the special needs of individuals and business. Call today. They're open. 496-1048. The New Mexico Lobos, only four plays, only three yards on the offense. But they had the ball for almost two minutes, and they did get a field goal out of it. New Mexico, 24. Tulsa, 20. Just 3.03 left in the ball game. Tulsa now has to hope for a good return. Benny May is back along with Kurt Phillips. 
Steve Parks ready to kick it off. He's up to the ball. It's off. It's down to the TU7. Benny May gets outside of the 10, the 15. He's got room at the 20, to the 25, all the way out to the 32-yard line. Benny May, an outstanding 25-yard return. The senior from Fort Worth averaging 18.7 per return. Got a 25-yarder that time. Well, you know, he wanted that great one. Three for 57 on the return for Benny May. A great, great afternoon in his final game as a hurricane playing in his hometown. 19 yards per, so he's right on his average. Chelsea, first and 10 at their own 32-yard line. Skip ass. Handoff. Ken Lacey, running room across the 35, out to the 40. He's out to about the 42-yard line. Oh, a big hole open up there by Steve Cox and Sid Abramowitz. And a big first down play for the Hurricane Bob as they get 10 out to the 42. Kenny Lacey, 18 carries for 73 yards. Tulsa, 58 yards away from Pater, but we're rolling down toward the two-minute mark. Clock running with 2-12 left. TU breaks the huddle quickly. One more play before the warning. Hand off Michael Gunner, just a couple of yards. Out to about the 44-yard line. And so that's the two-minute warning. TU trailing by 4, 24-20. We'll keep it right here, Bob, and talk about what the Hurricane has to do here. they got a long way to go. Tulsa does have a break in, though, that they have just 56 yards to go. And, and you know, that's something that if Gunner gets loose, one home run and Tulsa's back on top again. But can you depend on the running game at this time? I don't know. If Tulsa does have all of its timeouts, we'll see how they use them. Skip asked over on the sidelines, talking things over with John Cooper and Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator. You know, a critical thing, though, to remember, as we've mentioned before, Skip Ash has not completed a pass in the second half. He really has not thrown the ball well at all. Scott Brown was in for most of the third quarter and was three out of six and drove the Hurricane to a couple of field goals. But now it's time for the senior to hit the big one. Second and eight at the 44. Ash is 0 for 5 since returning. Two minutes left. Skip Ash looks over the defense. Back to throw. Looking. Michael Gunner. He's got it. At the 40. Into New Mexico territory, and he's down to about the 40 yard line of the Lobos. Oh, a big play for the Hurricane as Skip Bass threw a bullet to Michael Gunner. Michael Gunner's second catch of the afternoon for 21 yards, and he'll never make a bigger one. The Glade Water Texas Jr. puts Tulsa down at least within striking distance with about a minute 45 left. TU now breaks the huddle quickly. First and 10 at the New Mexico 40. Skip ass back to throw one more time. Looking for Kevin Harlan. He's got him. Down inside the 25 to the 21 yard line and out of bounds there with 125 remaining. The Ponca City sophomore making his first catch of the afternoon. 19 yards. Tulsa moving the football and amazingly moving it through the air. Tulsa now has time to rehuddle. A minute 25 left. They've got some timeouts remaining. First and 10 at the Lobo 21 yard line. That rather small but experienced Lobo defense digging in. They've come up with the big plays all year long. They need another one right here. Skip Ash brings them out. First and 10 at the 21. Handoff. Michael Gunner inside the 20. Down to the 15. He's down inside the 10 yard line. Oh, and Tulsa's going to call a timeout. First and goal at the nine, and David Irons and Steve Cox opened up one heck of a hole. Two seniors knowing they're probably playing their last series of college football, making a great move there. Gunner now to the 90-yard mark and over it, 93 yards and 17 carries. Delta talking things over in this timeout. Clock showing 1-10 left in the 82 Justice Bowl. The Lobos 24, the Hurricane 20. What an outstanding day of football it has been. All the TU fans standing now as Skip Ass returns to the huddle. First and goal at the nine, Bob. You talk about that smallish defensive line for New Mexico. 193, Eastham on the left side. 226, Greenwood. 270, Wilson. And 217, Best in the middle. 
And then Jimmy Carter at 203 on the right side. They're not that big, and Tulsa has a pretty good size offensive front four. First and goal at the nine. Handoff. Michael Gunner diving over the top, down to about the five, and we have a penalty flag on the play. And the preliminary signal says offsides against New Mexico. That will get TU one yard more than on the game, Bob, plus save them a down. That's the critical part. It'll save them a down. First and goal from the nine is no big break. You know, you've still got to traverse the nine toughest yards on the field and only have the same number of downs to do it. If it's against New Mexico, it'll really set the hurricane up. Referee Vance Carlson. Offside, New Mexico, defense, first down. First and goal at the four. One minute left. 60 ticks left on that scoreboard clock. Oh, the TU fans are really biting their nails right now. So are the Lobo fans. Their team leads by four. A field goal does the hurricane no good at all. Skip half. Back to throw. Looking in the end zone. Phillips. Touchdown. Touchdown. Oh, but we have a... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a penalty flag on the field. We'll have to check the flag. Tulsa got the touchdown, Bob, but it may be called back. Did Abramowitz, did Mark Eastham are uh, having some words down in front of us. Abramowitz at 272 is going to get the better of the argument against Eastham, but I don't think he's going to get the better of the play, apparently against the Hurricane. No touchdown for Tulsa. Oh, what a big break for the Lobo. First and goal at the nine. 49 seconds left. Oh, 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 oh. First down. Maybe the biggest penalty of the year against the Hurricane. You hear some of the boos. The illegal procedure of the call, and Tulsa will now have to set up and start it all over again. First and goal at the nine. 49 seconds left. Skip Ash brings them out. Skip Ash has the snap. He wants to throw. He's in trouble. He's scrambling. Looking at the end zone. misses it for some reason a block or whatever they could win it with a field goal but if he makes it a field goal would only tie Sucrum in his career 117 of 118 coming in he's hit all of his attempts today there's the snap it's down it's up it's good something to avoid a long run back here. He may even try to squib the kick, keep it on the ground, and, uh, you know, just kind of pin New Mexico inside the 30. If he could do that, he'd probably figure he's done his job. To Crum. Here he comes up to the football. It's a high one coming down short. New Mexico 17. Denny Allen has it. He's got running room across the 20, 25, out to the 30, to the 35-yard line. Oh, that's exactly what they needed. Good, good field position for the Lobos, and still 25 seconds and all of their timeouts remaining. David Osborne, a miracle worker earlier this season. He beat North Texas State in the last half minute, 20 to 17. Beat Colorado State, 29-24. Beat San Diego State in San Diego, 22 to 17. So he is no stranger to pressure. Just 25 seconds remain. Lobo, first and ten at their own 35. Osborne, back to pass, looking downfield. He's got a man, John Lane! Across midfield, down to the TU 44-yard line. 
Oh, a big play for the Lobos as Osborne threw a bullet and John Lane grabbed it. Lane, three catches, 38 yards, one touchdown. Hey, this Lobo ball club staying in it. Timeout New Mexico. They'll talk about it over the sidelines with the head coach, Jill Morrison, the offensive coordinator, Frank Sadler, on the headset upstairs. Goodness knows what they'll try here, Bob. They've done it time and time again this year, as you have said. One of the great throwing teams in all of football this year. The great thing is it's a great balance uh, that they had shown. Osborne on the season, about a 50% passer, but he gets the passes done when he needs them. 15 touchdowns and only eight interceptions on the year. He has one of each today. Here we go. First and 10 at the Tulsa 44-yard line. Osborne, back to throw once more, looking long to his left. He's got Darren Williams down inside the 30 to the TU 26 up for another timeout. And there you hear the New Mexico Lobo band striking things up. Oh, we're not finished yet. What a finish. Tulsa leads it by three, but the Lobos are knocking on the door. Nine seconds left. New Mexico with just the one timeout left. Williams, four catches for 64 yards. Can you imagine the tension on the sidelines in this football game and in the stand? I can't imagine any other bowl game coming down to this. First and 10, 26-yard line. Osborne back in the huddle now. His team's got the ball. He's looking at the Delta secondary. Back to throw, he's being rushed, he scrambles, he completes it to Keith McGee! Down to the Tulsa, 11 yard lines, out of bounds, right there! Two seconds left and they're at the Tulsa 11! McGee, six catches for 80 yards. Osborne gets one more shot. Now, New Mexico has one timeout left, of course the clock is stopped on the out of bounds. They have 11 yards to go. It would be a 28-yard field goal. Do you go for Park? Do you go for the field goal that gets the tie in this first Justice Bowl, or do you go for the marble? That's the interesting decision faced by Joe Morrison. Joe, of course, leaving to go to South Carolina. I've got to imagine he's going to say, hey, let's go for it. What have I got to lose? He really should. And that's what they're going to do. The field goal kicker, Pete Parks, is not on the field. First and 10 at the Tulsa 11. Two seconds left in the game. It's either do or die right here for both teams. David Osborne asking for quiet, and I don't think he's going to get it. He waves his arm a couple of times and then goes ahead and puts him under center. Here we go. Osborne. He's got the snap. He's scrambling, looking into the end zone. Intercepted! Ben Dennis! The game is over! Tulsa has come up with an interception in the end zone. Ben Dennis, the 5'8 junior from Blanchard, Oklahoma. They call him the Blanchard Bulldogs. And Tulsa holds on to win 27-24. on the final play of the ball game. The young junior all-conference player makes the big play. Tulsa wins the Justice Bowl. What a finish it was and what a game it was. John Cooper and Joe Morrison shaking hands in midfield. All the coaches congratulating each other for a superb football game. All the CU fans down on the field and there go the goalposts. John Cooper getting a ride off the field from his Hurricane players. What an unbelievable finish here in Fort Worth, Bob. We had 47,000 here. Oh. About 15,000 are on the field right now. They're going to be partying in Tulsa tonight. They'll be partying here in Fort Worth for quite some time. The first Justice Bowl, there's no way they'll be able to top this ball game. 27, 24, Tulsa. The celebration continues, and we'll be back to wrap things up in just a moment. The first Justice Bowl is history. The Golden Hurricane of GU 27, the Lobos of New Mexico 24, back after these messages.
At F&M Bank, our number one ranking in return on average assets, return on stockholders' equity and capital to assets ratio of the five largest Tulsa banks with assets of at least $100 million is backed by one more trick. Quick response, often within 24 hours. The F&M Bank and Trust Company. Where business is concerned, we're concerned at F&M. F&M, we're the right side at the right side. Member of the IC. Justice Bowl here in Fort Worth, Texas. The University of Tulsa with a dramatic win over New Mexico, 27-24. Bob Carpenter back with Bob Stevens. Robert, it was quite an end to a super football game. Oh, what a fabulous finish with the Lobos driving all the way down the field in the last 20 seconds, a chance to tie the ball game or win the ball game. Uh, you got to give Joe Morris some, some credit for going for the bundle rather than coming out with a tie. But a great play by Brent Dennis to save it. Down there among the crowd somewhere is our man from KOB, Mike Roberts, in the sidelines. Let's hear from him for a post-game report. Well, New Mexico just couldn't stop that last Tulsa drive, and the Hurricane secondary able to come up with a big play in the end zone to stop the Lobos on their last gas effort. Super ball game between two great ball clubs. It came down to the final minute, but Tulsa was able to come up with a big play they had to have, and New Mexico just couldn't do it. Thanks a lot, Mike Roberts, for your... Uh great sideline efforts during the ball game we're trying to get a hold of john cooper down on the sidelines mike is with him i understand we've got john cooper now mike's and ready to go uh, coach john cooper uh, congratulations on a great great victory great way to cap off a fantastic season and we did it in the bowl game exactly like we did it all season long you know with gunner and lacy and and opportunistic uh, defense that we talked about. They threw the football. Their quarterback's an outstanding football player and haven't had a fine uh, day throwing the ball against us. But Brent Dennis, as he's done all season, has made a great interception and saved the game. Thank you very much, Coach. We know that you're busy down there. A lot of press milling about on the field trying to grab Coach Cooper. And of course, he made the decision to stay at TU just a couple of days ago. And I have to think that that was a big motivation for some of the Hurricane players in this ball game. And it looks like now we have Brent Dennis, who came up with a big interception down on the field, putting on his earpiece right now. Brent, can you hear us yeah, down there? Go ahead. Okay. Brent, uh, first of all, give us your reaction about the big play that saved the ball game for TU. Well, yeah, we have. We, that's kind of what we've been standing on. He's been burning me pretty much all day and really had not had that good a day against him. I'm just kind of glad I got a little bit of revenge at the last second. It you know, feels good to win, though. Brent, was uh, John Cooper staying at TU and announcing that a couple of days ago uh, after being gone all week? Was that a big motivating factor? Oh, yeah, I know it was a big boost for me personally because I'm going to be back again. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to having the same coach, the same program for four years. And, you know, man, I know a lot of the underclassmen, we were really excited that he was staying, and I think it gave us a big lift in this game. How about those Lobos? Not many people in this part of the country had heard of the University of New Mexico before this afternoon. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, they are. They're a good team. I think, you know, it was a great game. I think we both showed that, you know, we deserve to be in the bowl. And, and man, we're glad we could play. And uh, I think it gave the fans, a, you know, their money's worth. All right. Brent Dennis, the Blanchard Bulldog, the junior. He'll be back next year playing for John Cooper. And he came up with a big saving play at the end of the game as New Mexico tried to go for all of it and get the winning touchdown. And Brent cut him off and Tulsa held the on, of course, for the 27-24 victory. Of course, the senior who has had a tremendous career at the University of Tulsa, the place kicker Sue Crum, holds all the TU records now, all the Valley records. He was two out of three this afternoon. 
Stu, can you hear us down there? A little bit louder, Bob. I can still hear you there. Okay, we'll try to talk a little bit louder. Uh, first of all, Stu, I'll ask you the same question that Bob Stevens just asked Brent Dennis. You, of course, will not be back next year to play under Coach Cooper, but did that help to motivate some of the seniors on this team? Uh, Bob, there's no doubt about that. You know, Coach Cooper is one of the greatest coaches, I think, in, in college football right now. And besides the fact that the last game I caught, so I'm excited to see him stay around. Uh, this is definitely a boost for the football program at Tulsa. Sue, was this the most was this the most exciting moment in your career, kicking the two field goals and winning? It's most exciting season. I'm glad it didn't come down to a field goal the last second. I'm afraid I would have choked out there. But uh, the team's been playing great the whole season. Um, so I say we just I'm so proud just being a part of a football team like this, and it was just a great team, and, and it, it's a fun team to play with. Okay, Sue Crom, thank you very much. The TU graduating senior who has already graduated, and of course he'll be sticking around the Tulsa area for a while. But what a super career he has had. That's about it as far as what's going to happen down on the field. We'll hear from the players. And Bob Stevens and I will be back in just a moment to wrap up Justice Bowl 82 as the Golden Hurricane of the University of Tulsa beats the Lobos in New Mexico 27-24. Back with a final word after this timeout. The American Theater Company, Getty, and KJRH-TV are proud to present a musical adaptation of Charles Dickens' famous holiday story. A Christmas Carol. Tickets are now on sale for this family musical, which runs from December 3rd through December 24th at the Tulsa Performing Arts Center. And as a special Christmas gift to you, Getty and KJRH TV are offering special discount coupons with $1 off any adult ticket. Just stop by your nearest Getty station throughout the Tulsa area and ask for your free Dickens Christmas Carol discount coupon. There's no purchase necessary. The American Theater Company's presentation of Dickens' Christmas Carol, a great way for your family to get into the spirit of the holiday season. Announcing